This video tutorial shows the creation of a very basic timetable. With this example, we can get an idea of the way of working with GHC, entering some data and entering assignments manually. We will establish a very simple timetable framework starting at 9 a.m. with seven sessions of 60 minutes and a time of zero minutes between sessions. We also define a break of 30 minutes after the third period and a noon pause of 90 minutes after the fifth period. Finally, we will ban Friday afternoons. It is necessary to indicate the number of classrooms we have. We have only five classrooms for this simple example. In the list of classrooms, we will also register a gym and a laboratory. Thus, we have two specific classrooms, while the remaining three classrooms will be assigned as general purpose or anonymous classrooms. To be able to set up the class units, it is necessary to previously define the subjects, the groups and the teachers. The subjects are those that are taught to different groups of students. Even if the same subject is assigned to several groups, it is only defined once. To configure the class units, groups of students will need to be assigned to the subjects. All the groups of the school will be defined one by one. Also, one by one, we will need to define the teachers who will be responsible for teaching the subjects to the groups of students. In the list of class units, we will select the group 3rd grade A, so that we can introduce its class units. To enter the class units, we need to associate a subject, a teacher, the number of class units per week and per day, a classroom, and a set of alternative classrooms. Likewise, the rest of class units are introduced until all the subjects of this group are completed. One possible way to make class units simultaneous would be to drag a row over another. We have already introduced the class units of this group. We observe how its weekly distribution has been expressed. Four single class units per week, or one double session and one single. Divisions can be displayed graphically. The assigned classrooms and alternative classrooms can also be viewed. In the list of groups, the times at which the class units of the group can be fitted are marked in the frame. In this case, we have 33 sessions for 33 working positions. We can now launch the engine to check that these sessions fit for both teachers and groups. To enter the class units of 3rd grade B, we can copy those of 3rd grade A using the command copy the class units of another group. The elective subjects of the groups of the same grade are usually simultaneous, regrouping them in different classrooms. For that purpose, first you must undo the simultaneous sessions of third grade B by clicking and dragging each of their class units. After dragging and dropping these class units in the same subject from third grade A, it is indicated that they must be simultaneous to each other and must be taught in the same classroom. We could also fix the position of any subject, for example, tutoring during the final period on Thursdays, or establish conditions on the teachers by putting some forbidden positions or indicating their preferences. There is a wide variety of conditions that you can establish on both teachers and class units, such as defining a teacher who has a day off. You can adjust the weighted criteria indicating what you want to give priority when optimizing results such as compacting or balancing the teacher's timetables. The validation stage checks that there are no conflicts in the newly created timetable. If there is any conflict, you will need to resolve the conditions that created it. However, the planner is able to identify most of the causes of conflicts. It is highly recommended to try to generate results as you add new class units in order to verify experimentally if results fit and if they are appropriate to the requirements of the desired timetable. This way, you can continue adding more elements to the timetable, new groups of students with their class units, meetings, on-call hours, or other activities, while adjusting their conditions and preferences. When you have entered all the class units that must be included in the timetable, you can now complete all the necessary restrictions, establish preferences and adjust the weighted criteria. 
For instance, if a teacher teaches two different subjects to the same group, you can enter a restriction so that those subjects do not coincide on the same day. There are certain types of conditions that can be either weighted or strict. In order to let the engine work to optimize timetables, it is first necessary to obtain complete results to be optimized. The fewer restrictions that have been entered, the greater flexibility the engine will have in order to optimize the timetables, with the goal of making them better and more balanced for your institution. Thank you for your attention.